No, it says not like, says not like not like not like 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 Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, January meeting of the Buckingham Town Council Planning Committee. Um, thank you for coming. Wish you all ha happy New Year. Those of you who haven't seen you. Um, we start obviously with public session. As far as we can see, we have no one wishing to speak publicly. No, thank you. In that case, we'll get on with the agenda. And first of all, apologies for absence, Louise. Councillor Davies and Councillor O'Donnell. Thank you, it's Councillor Davis and Councillor O'Donoghue. Uh, declarations of interest, received declarations of any personal or prejudicial interest under consideration on the agenda. Do we have anyone? I'll just declare the application that I won't comment on, so I don't have to do it all the way through the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Stashbury, who of course is also a member of the Buckinghamshire Council. Do I declare apologies because I'm not in the room? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll minute the fact you're not in the room, John, for attending by Zoom. Okay. Um, yeah, of course, as you know, John, you can speak, but you, you can't vote in the I know. I, know. I, didn't, I was just going to say the same thing. I wondered if we suspend standing orders so John can speak at any point. Yeah, if you'd like to make, yes, make that. Is everyone happy with that? Yes. So, John, you can join in whenever you, you wish during any debate. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, but presume, haven't we ordered standing orders yet, though, to do that? Or is that just a recommendation so far? We've just done that. No, no, that, just that, that job. But in terms of full council, that hasn't yet been agreed by full council. It's just All right. Okay. Full council. Thank you. So I've received the minutes of the last meeting, which was actually the Monday, November 29th. Um, these will be put before the full council on February the 7th. Um, does everyone agree with the, the correct true record of that meeting? Thank you. And of course, the meeting that followed in December was a, a virtual informal meeting because we, we couldn't meet up because of the Omicron crisis at that moment. Um, that meeting was cancelled and planning applications with responses were agreed by the Mayor, the Chair and the Vice Chair, and they are in Appendix A, but I think most of you were at that meeting, so you knew what happened. Item 4, Bucking. And neighbourhood plan, the availability plan to receive any update? No, at the moment. We haven't been anything on her, she knows. Oh, um, so she, she is not one at the moment, so she oh. will work for at least two weeks, possibly slightly longer. Right. So we, we, we are planning our next uh, neighbourhood plan working group until she is there, so that's obviously. I think the date's in the diary. Yeah. So that, that means it will go. Thank you. Councillor Stutchbury? Not to say what was in it, but if members have got the time to watch um, the financial scrutiny sessions, um, please watch the session questioning the Cabinet Member for Planning. Um, after you've watched it, then maybe a conversation to be had about stuff which was said in it to do with plans, neighbourhood plans, local plans, Buckinghamshire plan. I think it'd be wise to watch it. Um, it it was alluded to conversations around the likelihood of the Buckinghamshire plan being agreed. Um, it also alluded to the importance of local plans and, and odd words. But the thing which is key is the section of the questions around whether the Buckinghamshire plan would be agreed and what government policy may have an effect on the delivery of the Buckingham plan. Of course, we're waiting for the government policy to come through, but it's in the middle of doing a plan, and that in itself is difficult. So I don't want to carry the opinions of people. I'd rather them watch the... Sure. and then draw your own opinions and then discuss it afterwards. I think that's the proper way of doing it, rather than me say what I think. But which meeting was it? Was it? Um, it's the finance scrutiny meeting. It's finance scrutiny. Right. Yeah, it'll be the section where the Cabinet Member for Planning... OK, um, thank you. Oh, was, was this this month? Or? Yes, it yeah, was. It, January. it was January meeting. It's, it's, it's the one where they talk about the budget. So they ask you lots of questions about planning and you'll learn more about 
the concerns in general, but there were some comments about the Buckinghamshire plan, stroke neighbourhood plan, which I think is important for people to draw their own conclusions about without me drawing my conclusions in advance. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for that. Um, item five is action reports. Um, you'll notice an action list which Catherine provided. That is an updated version of that we would have considered at the December 20th meeting. Um, anyone got any comments on anything in there? Not at the moment, right? Just to look at it, Bypass Bridge, we're still awaiting uh, a report back from Councillor White and the <clears throat> LAT looking into the condition of the bridge. Um, the tree situation in Buckingham, Neil Passmore, the county tree officer, is being invited to a meeting. Town clerk, any progress on that? No, there will definitely be an update before the meeting. Good, thank you very much. Next meeting. Um, neighbourhood of plan, likewise, town clerk setting up a meeting with the new neighbourhood plan officer, county one. Yeah. Again, we'll hope to have that day. Thank you. Uh, Buckinghamshire Council planning staff levels, which uh, Councillor Stutchford has raised. It's on the agenda tonight, 8-2. Um, Sorry, Chair? Yeah, Councillor Harley. Should we change item four as a standard thing to now the Buckinghamshire plan as well? Because that's now under discussions and in progress. So should that standard minute or agenda item include the Buckinghamshire plan too? That's a good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. we propose that we take on board Councillor Harvey's suggestion. Right. Yes, I, I can't propose it. I'm just That's suggesting. What I'm saying. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it will look a bit odd, John. Yeah. So, can we have a second over that? Just to make it keep it formal. Thank you, Councillor Barhi. Everyone in favour? Thank you. So, the next next meeting will we'll have Buckinghamshire plan as well. Thank you. Um, enforcement reports from. Queries on Fellows Hall, Council Statutory was pursuing these complaints. Robin, any update for us? We'll have when I get round to actually writing the email. Um, I haven't actually done it and I haven't got the information to be able to write the email, which we will, once I get that, I'll do it. As... You've had it for three hours. I've had it for three hours. <laughs> in which case, I apologise, in three hours I haven't actually done any with it. <laughs> in which case, you can scold me. I will sit here and write it as homework during the meeting. <laughs> yeah, if you could report to the next meeting, Robin, that would be great. Uh, neighbourhood plan review, survey questions, the town plan officer was circulating the final version to councillors for comments. Um, we've had something from Nina, haven't we? She sent out. Is that the individual ones? I think that's kind of morphed into the neighbourhood plan. Okay. We'll wipe it up before we get so given Sheena's um, absence, we need to wait for that. Yeah, we'll be right, thank you. Um, and then the town clerk was writing to Buckinghamshire Council asking for criteria for strategy consultees on the list, particularly with regards to the North Bucks uh, planning, the uh, parishes planning for the game that's in progress, thank you. And of course our representative on that is... Um... <laughs> 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 Chair, uh, Councillor Anthony Ralph. I'll probably get the right way around. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. Chair? Uh, Councillor Harvey. Um, have we sent off the letter about the street lighting? Has that gone off? Um, no. Because no. it was drafted, I did offer it my comments drafted back to you. Councillor Stutchbury has yet to reply. Did you catch that okay? Sorry, this is a hard Paddington stare at, at, at Robin here. Yeah. So the three of you are formulating a letter. Why send it tomorrow? Because you clearly missed it. I clearly haven't had a difficulty finding it. I mean, <laughs> I am full of, I'm full of humbleness here. Um, <laughs> I expect you had a busy present. <laughs> so anything else on the action list? No, in that case, thank you. We... We'll move down to item 5.2, which is received and discussed as a suggestion arriving from the public session before the October 4th full council. Uh, Mrs. Robinson, you remember, raised concerns about the car parking at Cornwall's Meadow Care Home. That is not within our remit. That is a matter for Buckinghamshire planning. But what we are asked to consider is conducting a footfall survey across the bridge from Hartlands Park 
to the car park in order to ascertain the volume of pedestrians that have to cross the busy car park entrance to reach shops and other facilities. So it's been suggested we carry out this survey and tonight, uh, if appropriate, we need to agree dates and times when councillors would be able to carry out such a survey and to solicit volunteers. Councillor Gailey. Thank you. Could I suggest we include cy cycle journeys as well, cyclists coming across the bridge? Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. It seems quite dangerous potentially to me, but... Yeah, yeah okay. thank you. It'd be scooter riders as no, well. and electric. Mm -hmm. yeah. Councillor Stutchbury. I think it would be um, prudent to include the prehistory of this area, um, like what was agreed there, wasn't agreed there, how it's changed to what it is now, because I think it's... It's worth noting that there was proposals to do all sorts of things in that area. One of them was a public toilet, and that wasn't actually agreed because of the problem with the entrance. And then the planning commission came through, and there wasn't a problem with the entrance. So I think we need to have all that information in, not with opinion, but with so that people can say that. And then when we come to do our assessment, which we should assess, is how we do that, because it's not a great space to stop people and um, talk to them really, they're coming over mm -hmm. the bridge. You just need to stand with a clicker like you can do at the entrance to an event. We're not going to click them, we're just going to measure usage. There was need to count when you're using it. Andy loves counting people. That's a try. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Oh, sorry, did I have that look of... Uh, oh, sorry, I thought you had your arm. You no, I'm resting. Okay. I was, something was going through my mind though. Um, we, if what you just said, it wasn't just about clicking, do you not want to know the types of people walking, cycling, you know, rather than just clicking numbers? Wasn't it the individual... Um, Push chairs. Yeah, uh, out, yes, type of people walking across and what they were doing rather than just counting, basic that, counting. That's a tough call if you're standing. Trying to write With a a click ball, you just, you know, one, 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 across, five. That's, yeah, yeah. Barcode, yeah. Yeah. I suppose what we need to discuss is, is where we want to do it okay. to be for. <laughs> Councillor Harvey? Yeah, I think Robin's right. I think we need to have details of what is currently being planned for that exit, exactly where pedestrians are meant to be going. Um, because obviously people are going to probably ask us a question when we're sitting there or whatever we're going to do there. So I think we need to know the facts as they currently are and what is, in a sense, the developer must have a plan that, they've got, that they're going to be working to once they've stopped depositing mud everywhere. Um, and I think we need to do it in a similar way to what we did before with the car park up on uh, by the Swan Pool. Um, it will need coverage and we need to decide on which days we do it. We probably can't do it for a whole week, but maybe we do it maybe on a on a Tuesday and on a I don't know on a Friday or something like that to kind of or a Saturday, the busiest day, and so on, um, when there might be most people. Although a lot of people, of course, would come um, across from other angles. I, I, I think it's going to take a bit of thought as to what kind of tally sheet we we use, yes. um, because it's going to be quite complicated. But I think we will need to kind of cover. You know the whole the whole time, and that means we're going to need quite a few volunteers to sit there for about an hour, and 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 do it, because it's going to require a fair a fair amount of diligence to to comment on that. And I am very worried. I'm obviously I'm a regular, tra you know, traveller over that particular spot. Um, I'm a I'm I'm very worried about what's going to happen, depending on how busy that junction is going to be. There's going to be cars coming from all different directions. Um, and I think it's uh, sadly, I think it's an accident waiting, mm. waiting to happen. Mm. Um, we know the history, of course, about the toilets were meant to be there and everything else. Um, lastly, I would say as well, it was good to see that Buckinghamshire Council have fixed that wayward um, uh, sort of uh, piece of um, curb that was sloshing around um, by the, the dropped curb by the community centre. That has finally been fixed now, so there's no danger of sloshing water all over your trousers when you put your foot in the wrong place. So thanks to Buckinghamshire Council for doing that. Thank you. Councillor Gailey? Yes, thank you. I just wonder whether we should take the opportunity while somebody's going to be there to count the number of car movements, although we, we, we'll be doing it before they open, possibly. I don't know. It depends on yeah, the yeah. But if, if they were open, <laughs> it might be worth. You don't think it's a good idea? 
Could, could I ask the committee what you see as the ultimate aim of this? To put, get enough figures to, to demand a pedestrian crossing or, or lights? Or uh, what, what, would be, what, what are we aiming for? Well, yeah. Mm. Councillor Stashbury? Very good point. I mean, are we aiming to prove that it's well used, which we already know? <laughs> are we aiming to um, lobby for a crossing there, which would be difficult, wouldn't it, by an entrance? Um, are, we, um, are we aiming to improve the signage um, to make people aware that there isn't, as you come over the bridge, a sign saying oncoming traffic, there isn't something saying um, the other way, pedestrians crossing. I think the very least we should be aiming to get is a couple of signs put in making pedestrians and cyclists aware they're coming onto the open way. road mm -hmm. to give way and traffic, because the law's just changed, hasn't mm -hmm. it, about pedestrians mm -hmm. now. So anyone yeah. stood there, um, yeah. it's changed tonight and it's changed on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So presumably any pedestrian walking out there towards the bridge, the traffic will automatically have to stop now and allow the pedestrian to cross. So it's probably a good time to do this. Um, I didn't get any consultation about it, apart from my boys pointing out the fact that you probably need to read the R Highway Code again, Dad. Um, um, but I do think that it is, the regulations have changed. So uh, we did, perhaps why before we do it, and I think we should wait till the weather warms up a little bit, and probably the development is in operation because at the moment, Everything changes once the development's in operation, doesn't it? Because when the development's in operation, we're better to see it in, in the real terms. All we're seeing now is building traffic. We won't see how um, people access the development, how people come out of the development, how that changes the dynamics. Mm. So we always need to, as Anthony said, um, Mark said, we need to find exactly what we want to do. And we also need to include access for all in it. Um, because if we don't ask them, we've done the wrong thing and really work down a workload. Those are some things I thought of, but at the very least we need is, is some signage in there because the law's changed and um, on Saturday. So um, all the pedestrians coming down there, we'll all have to <coughs> see them. We'll have to, and my reading of it is if we see them, we have to anticipate and stop and let them, let them cross because it's on a bend of the road. That might be a misinterpretation of the law, but it has changed. So, it has a junction. so I mean, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Thank you, Councillor Ralph. Thank you, Chair. I, think <laughs> I was just going to say, I imagine that the uh, ultimate idea is to uh, be able to press for a pedestrian crossing at some point along that road with any other uh, mitigating uh, elements that we've discussed. But certainly, that's got to be our aim, I think. Thank you. Councillor Harvey, and then... I think I think there's got to be some serious thought about this. I mean, I've just been thinking here, perhaps we need to change the entrance to the car park so that the entrance that cars currently come out of might be better off if that was the one that the cars go into and they come out at the other end near where the, the toilets and the um, shop mobility is, so they come out at that end and therefore can be seen quite a long way away by anybody crossing the road. Because right now, if you're crossing from the bridge across the community centre, cars pop out of the exit before you know what's going on. Um, I, I, I think this needs some really serious thought as to how it should happen um, here to fore. It's, 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 it's worries me. I was just going to add to the fact that <laughs> given the likelihood of pedestrians, either pedestrian crossing or signs or whatever, the congestion on Stratford Road itself is going to increase exponentially. And um, you're going to have to think, I think, I was thinking just the other day, you have to queue to get out of that car park now quite often. And I think a mini roundabout, at the very least, is going to be required because you can see cars piling up and just just being <coughs> the chaos, which of course was predicted when the planning application came in. But we should not forget about that junction as well. Well, they were under the um, Maids Morton warm up ah, yes. tree plan, we are going to have cross hatching on that junction, oh, great. <laughs> which means that cars, well, at the moment, cars block you from getting mm -hmm. out of Stratford Road. They, they, they don't think to stop and let you out. So if there's cross hatching, which you can't go on to yeah. unless your way is clear, at least that might help. Well, I think it's the free yeah. flow of traffic and roundabouts tend to make 
traffic flow freer because we've all seen it queuing up the uh, road up to the roundabout oh, yeah. mm. bypass. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, or the other uh, uh, solution would be there only a left turn coming out of the car park. Uh, so you go to the little mini roundabout and come back on yourself. Mm, that's that's the more road and back to the more, isn't it? There's mm. going to have more traffic going, you know, almost twice as much as going that way. Because if nothing can turn right, everything has to turn there. Yeah. Every single thing coming out. That's the touch group. I think we have to set ourselves achievable aims mm -hmm. um, from this, which is A, correct enough data. My view is to get some improvement of the signage, which I said earlier, because that is achievable. That is something that we could lobby to get, I think. Um, and if nothing else, by being there, making people aware of the issue, um, what we shouldn't do is, now the planning applications agreed, is say anything prejudice against the business, because the business has had their planning application agreed, that section's finished with, so we shouldn't in some way imply that it's terrible people because that's the planning result of the application but was the district council then. So I think we just need to set ourselves a goal which is achievable. Um, I think two signs is achievable uh, and doing it, lobbying it and with access for all being there, you can't quantify how difficult it is in a wheelchair unless you're in one. And you can't quantify how difficult it is if you're pushing one. So we need that to see how it works, how someone with a wheelchair approaches that, how they work, whether they can easily get across there to the drop curve on the other side, if it, if it lines up, or whether the drop curve needs modifying yeah. to make it. The drop curve then lines up perfectly because I often put yeah. on the bike. Oh, but now you're going to have to cycle in the centre of the road, remember, under the new laws. Only on quiet. <laughs> Only if there's two of you. Um, it's a quiet. No, I'm, I'm not being silly. I, I mean, we should set ourselves an yeah. achievable goal out of this. Otherwise, we fail because we can't go along, take it beyond this, and ask for them to do that because they'll say there's no money to do that. But I think we can reasonably because it's a car park which is operated by Buckinghamshire Council, which should operate in a safe manner. I think we're reasonable to suggest for an on deck that we prove the usage of it. I've said for a long while that. Outgoing traffic emerging from behind the parking yeah. station has got no visibility no. at all. I think it might be an idea to involve Councillor White in this because one, it's his ward, and two, it was his major point at committee that access wasn't safe. Mm -hmm. Well, we can include Councillor White in, in it, but it's on the agenda, mm -hmm. and these councillors could be here. Um, so I've never been wrong in coming into it, but the actual car park doesn't just serve Buckingham East, and no. it serves the entire Buckingham the and, and, and the entire everywhere else. It's a big argument. Yeah. 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 So may I suggest, may I suggest then, that we do invite Councillor Hodge to take part in this discussion at yeah. our next meeting and then yeah. we can yeah. then it'll be February we can then decide perhaps in March <coughs> if we can start we can do this survey and get volunteers would that be but, the logical way to move the, the logic would be to invite all the Buckinghamshire councils on that side and the other side too we shouldn't single out individual councils because we need a, a, a collective approach on this not a not an individual's approach on this I think mm. if you're going to do anything you want to get people on your side um, choosing individuals, yes, I'm here. Councillor White is a member of the town council, come here, how it is, and Adi, Adi is. I mean, but there are two other members of So I think we need to say we're going to do this and involve them in the process so that if there's a decision taken, we can involve them in, in supporting the decision. We shouldn't. Um, um, I spoke at the planning application at Buckinghamshire Council against it. I went and spoke down because I called the decision in. Um, against the care home, and um, 20, there's 23 minutes of them questioning me if you want to watch it. It's well entertaining. Um, but um, so I don't recall, um, yeah, and yours good self spoke at the Buckingham Town Council. So it's not about what's been done in the past. That's not the premise, it's about the past, this is about the future. And we need to not factor, as I said, on the planning application side of it, we need to factor on the safety of it and the two sides. Um, 
when we do the survey, when we decide to do that, um, we should bring more people into it. They don't want to come, they don't want to come, but, but that, if it's going to be quite a long day, if everybody did an hour, the more people we have, the less jaws it, it, it would be and the better result we'll get because people will be fresh and enthusiastic, won't they? Well, this was actually raised at full council. It was then sent to planning to deal with. So perhaps what we should do, what you're suggesting, to send it back to full council. Yes, and say this is what we recommend. Because there's more chance of more volunteers. Yes, mm -hmm. because at the moment yeah. um, we've got... Um, that's the harvest listening carefully to what we're saying. Spoke elegant about it, but um, we've got two apologies, other apologies here. Yeah. Now, if it goes to full council as a recommendation that we do this with the support of Access for All, I think it's a good point to bring the Buckingham Society into it because, after all, they 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 are representing sections of the community and they've got a a, a steer over the way the town operates and the good nature it operates. I think it's a good idea. But we can, of course, do that tonight. Send it, send it back to the council. Well, as I say, if, if you, somebody goes propose... Well, I'll propose to send it back. Thank you. Second, please. Second, Councillor Ralph, thank you. So, do, you do, do we need to deal with that before I ask oh, my... I was going to ask another question. Yeah, please do. We've got to propose a second, so it's mm. open. It's not to do with that All right. particular issue. Um, it's, you know... Councillor Stutchbury has wisely suggested that we ask access for all. I just wonder whether that's something they've already discussed. And if not, if they are meeting, we could set, you know, suggest that something that they would like to consider. I think that's, that was in, included in what Councillor Stutchbury yeah, was but I, just, I think the, through you, Chairman, the Mayor, the Mayor's quite right because we don't know what they've discussed. It could be that they've got a view already mm. and they've got some information which could come to full council if they don't come themselves to actually inform the discussion at full council, which can go on the, the agenda and um, be taken into consideration. We have access on agendas. Mm. Yeah. We? So, um, um, Thank you. So we've got a proposal and second. All those in favour that we do, do as recommended? Can I propose a um, That we propose that we um, refer it back to council to undertake a survey, including partner organisations such as um, Access for All and the um, Buckingham Society to establish usage of the junction to see whether there's enough information to support at the early stage at least some improvement of the signage. I think that's that's a reasonable aspiration but all the other things can come out it can be amended en route. If you don't say why you might want to do something that's why I said the signage, because we can be amended on route, because the discussion will lead where we go to, at full council. And could I just suggest that we insert a couple of words in there? So you would said to, to um, find out usage and have a sign, but can we put um, to, um, I can't think the actual appro words. Uh, appropriate measures to mitigate or to the enhance safety and danger that we see. Reduce the risk of accident at the well, junction. Quite, quite yeah, yeah. I don't understand the logic because otherwise you're deeming, and I mean, why I said it will come out afterwards, I think yeah. you're right. So is that acceptable to you? Quite, I think it's acceptable to me. I'm just going to take a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So all those in favour along those lines, thank you very much. That's going back to council. Fine, um, we can move on to planning applications now. We've got. Um, Eight and a half tonight to look at. <laughs> um, eight and a half. Tonight. The first one. This one's already been decided. Yeah. <laughs> the first one is uh, number seven, Boswell Court, which is up on Page Hill. It's right at the very top of Page Hill. It's a change of use of amenity land to residential garden land and enclosed by a 2.1 metre timber close board fence. This land is alongside seven Bos Boswell Court. It's in a cul de sac. It is owned by the people at Boswell Court. We're not sure whether they bought it from the university at the time that they had students up there or from ABDC. Catherine did attempt to find out from Neil Passmore today, but he, he wasn't very clear about that. So there is a question at the moment of whether or not they would be allowed to erect a fence on open community land. We've got this Mallard Drive that's been turned down because 
they had a covenant mm. on heartlands that you could not erect anything on open community land, whether you owned it or not. Um, so what we need to look at is, first of all, um, they want to put this fence up and then take their stone, their, their brick garden wall down to enlarge their garden. And secondly, the fence at 2.1 metres is higher than our preferred 1.8 metres. So anyone have any comments on this? Carolyn? Um, well, yes, certainly the Buckingham Society had quite a lot of comments on it. Um, firstly, uh, the ownership is, is probably problematical. Um, secondly, um, the uh, principle of taking down um, a wall uh, and using amenity land on a development that is very much uh, contrary to what it looks like at the moment. Page Hill has got nice walls, it's got good amenity land, and this seems to me a precedent that should not be followed. The Bicom Society are particularly worried about the precedent aspect of it, because where will this lead to community and amenity mm. land being taken over by mm. individuals? Yeah. It's, it's certainly, as a principle, it is completely wrong. And on this particular case, the, the height of the fence is unacceptable. But also it's the destruction of a wall that is part and parcel of the character of Page Hill. So we object very strongly and um, I hope we'll be taken into account. Thank you. And you start to speak on this? Councillor Tron? Absolutely echo all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Hill is meant to be um, sort of more of an open um, uh, development and it was designed that way and it should stay that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Obviously one thing we are doing is we, we, when we do put our response in, we will question whether or not there is any covenant or condition on this amenity land. It cannot be built on on page Hill. So. That, that is an answer we'd need. So I think again, that means either that we, we, we object tonight or or we want, we request further information. It's up, up to the committee. <clears throat> yep. Yes, Martin? Well, I think we have refused a few other applications <laughs> up there. So just keeping our consistency going, um, that's another reason that we ought to refuse it. Right, so one for the uncertainty over whether or not it, that there are any conditions or covenants and to the height of the fence. Which I think there is. Yeah. <clears throat> Margaret. Yeah, thank you. Regardless of whether there's a covenant or not, I think we should be objecting. Okay. So even if it turns out that there isn't a covenant, because <coughs> um, otherwise the implication could be if there isn't a covenant, then it's okay. And I don't think it is okay in either circumstance, but obviously we've got more ammunition if there is a covenant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does everyone agree with that? We can trust Catherine to word that accordingly. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, well, now, now you've voted on it, Chairman. Can I suggest that this is going to be an ongoing question um, about areas of land which should either not or have been transferred either by the previous local authorities to private um, ownership? And there's some questions in it about um, if an open space remains an open space at a community space when it's transferred. There's questions about how many portions of land have been transferred. And there's also questions because maps will show land maintained by the district and known by the district and land maintained by Buckinghamshire County Council, now owned or by Buckinghamshire Council. I think we need to start a conversation outside the planning issues to establish um, what has been the policy of, of selling land. Is it still the current policy? Could we have some idea of how much pieces of land have been sold by the previous authorities? And that type of thing, because, and the maps to see where, where is open space is all belonging to Buckinghamshire Council now, not to another authority. Because it must be difficult um, for anyone to assess this. So I'd like to suggest that we are separate to the application. This isn't a comment on the application, it's a comment on making things better going forward, that we ask for a letter to be drafted somewhere along those lines to start a conversation about this. Because I think we're going to, in both wearing it, whatever authority you're in, I think these are questions we're going to be confronted with again and again. I can think of other applications 
which have um, had similar questions in the past 12 months and, and going back in time. So is that a reasonable thing to ask, um, to do? Um, if it's done reasonable, please say so. Yeah. I see if they know. Well, that's, that, that's your, as ever, Catherine, you're very foresighted um, 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 to see if they know. I think that's... Well, it um, must be somewhere in the old ABDC archives. Um, yes. Um, thank you. Not Is everyone happy with that? Thank you. Yeah. thank you, Robin. Very good idea. Thank you for raising that. Excellent. Um, application number two is 20 Bushy Close, which is... Uh, down below the um, old strap for roundabout on the bank there. Uh, by the way, both these plans have been uh, have public notices posted both on the 20th of December. There's been no comments on either of them on the portal. So this one at Bushy Close is a householder application for a single story rear extension. I'm sure you've all seen Catherine's uh, notes on this. It's quite a large garden area at the back. Anyone have any comments on that? No, we're all happy. Thank you. Um, moving on then to 89 Western Avenue, householder application for a proposed garage and loft conversion with associated internal external works um, for a change. This is reducing five bedrooms to four because they're going to put some extra bathrooms in. The planning notice was erected on the 29th of December. There's no comments on the planning portal. Anyone have any comments on that? Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you. Has a yellow notice gone on this? Because the loft inversion just concerns me. You might be overlooking uh, somebody else's properties. The loft conversion always have that issue. Do they have a window is or a... Over the garage and the only neighbour it's going to overlook at all is the um, Plymouth Brethren's meeting hall beside the car park of our Western if you look at the map on page five, mm -hmm. and you can see the hall. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer that one? Andy, yeah. thank you. Is everyone happy with that? Thank you. Um, the fourth application is number five, Bushy Close. Uh, now, this is diagonally opposite number 20, which you just dealt with. It's a householder application for demolition of garage, porch, and conservatory. Direction of a two story side and single story rear extensions and side porch. It's quite a big site on the corner, and the planning notice was posted on the 29th of December. There's been no comment on the planning portal. Anyone have any comments on that? No? Uh, Kat, Karen. Well, <laughs> just to say that uh, we thought the design was quite clever and improves the appearance of the property. Uh, though it has been apparently a comment from the neighbour opposite to one of our members that uh, they're a bit worried about the parking issues. But there are three spaces, although I suspect the grass area in front of the property might be diminished. Well, there's certainly no concerns about parking. No, no, there are, because they have shown three spaces. Yeah. Um, I, I gather the person involved thinks there are four cars but there's nothing, nothing one can do about it. Mm. I just pass the comment on. Thank you. They didn't feel strong enough to put a comment no, on the portal. No. No. Mm -hmm. mm. Parking does not, the, none of the regulations stretch to four spots anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, the, t the two that are there are well within their own boundary, and there's plenty of space beside the black one. Yeah, we didn't see it as a concern, just a comment. It is on the inside of the bench, so I expect they just part them. Yeah. Martin, there was a suggestion at a previous meeting that if there was any change to garages or the frontage, that we would suggest um, installing a electric car points as part of that um, change. I don't know whether we would like to carry that suggestion through. Yeah, why not? Yes, we, we, we could discuss that at the last meeting, didn't we? Mm. Yeah, we, so we could have that as, as a rider. It's, it's mm. not, we can't enforce it, but we can certainly put in a, a strong suggestion. Yes. Mm. Thank you. 
And I imagine a lot of these householders will be eventually transferring to electric cars because we won't have any petrol or diesel there, will we? Hydrogen. <laughs> Hydrogen is the way to go. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone happy with that then? Thank you for that, Martin. Um, <clears throat> right. Item number five is going to be a tricky one. This is the workshop land off Tintrick mm -hmm. Road. Um, this is right on the bridge at the start of Tindrick Road. It's in the conservation area. Um, there have been a lot of concerns raised, most particularly by the ward councillor, shire councillor Warren White, about the flooding potential, the fact that the fence has been erected with no room underneath for flood water. Um, there's her, it's in flood zone three, and as we know, over the years July 2007 and Christmas 2020 especially, this area was completely underwater. Um, the planning notice has not yet been posted, although the application is validated on December the 23rd, so immediate residents may not know of this application, although it is retrospective and they're, they're well aware that the shed and the fence are there. Councillor White is proposing to call it in. He's, Concerned about it enough? Does this committee feel, Carolyn? <laughs> well, the Buckingham Society definitely feels it should be called. Cool. Um, where does one start? Because the list of objections that Catherine has so kindly given us good detail on make it quite clear that this is a property and a, and a site over which abuse after abuse has been has been channeled. And on the particular application before us, we think that the displacement of water, which should, should be allowed on that property, is completely null and void now with the breeze box and coat and um, close board fencing, uh, exacerbated by the proximity of the bridge, because you can't push the water onto the ground. It's going to push back onto the bridge, causing damage, we think. Um, and of course, the other aspect of it is it is in the conservation area, and the timber fence over the stone wall, the parapet of the stone wall of Tingit Road, is extremely disfiguring. And uh, if you only have to look at the stone parapet over London Bridge to see that the two are very well matched, and to put close boarding on either of them would be an anomaly that should not be allowed. <coughs> Thank you. As Councillor White also made the point, um, they have done quite a lot of work on the riverbank. And he said in his objection, I hope the Environment Agency will be asked for their views on this, um, have they applied for it. So that there is quite a lot against it. I don't know if any of you have seen Councillor White's um, actual comments, but that's probably a good yeah. model for us to follow yeah. if, if it's this committee's desire to object to this. Do you have a, a comment on that? You don't wish to object or approve it? Or? I think we ought to. I, I would um, um, yeah. uh, oppose it. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, opposing. Yes. Councillor Try, seconded by Councillor Ralph. Yes. And for all those reasons, um, and to make also note of the fact that local residents have not yet been warned by planning notice, as, as we normally put on. Okay. Thank you. All those in favour? That's everyone. Thank you. I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining because it will we'll come to community. Yeah, when it comes up. Right. Item six is number two, Keys Way. This is back up on Page Hill. It's just off Hilltop Avenue. Um, it's a householder application for a first floor side extension with an entrance canopy. The planning notice was posted on January the 5th. There are no Public comments on the planning portal. Everyone happy with that? Thank you. Um, then number 10, Aris Way. And members of that might like to know this is our first planning application starting with 22. Um, and <laughs> it's Aries Way. Sorry, Aries, you've been doing an Aries now. Um, um, Councillor Stutchley told me during the briefing this afternoon, whatever you do, call it Aries. Yeah. Because Councillor Isham my, would be persistent that we did that. My apologies to a former man. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is a householder application for single story side extension. Um, it is a five bedroomed house. The planning 
Notice went up on the 17th of December. There are no objections. Um, one thing which a number of people have drawn our attention to is it has a flat roof. Councillor Brown? Yes, thank you, Chair. I was going to bring this point up precisely. Um, it doesn't fit in with the town vernacular. We're not keen on flat roofs, are we not? So how they would quite create a, a pitch roof is another matter because you can actually see that there's uh, various different elevations and roof slopes. But nevertheless, I think it certainly should be commented that uh, we would prefer a pitch roof. Yeah, this committee certainly has a history of objecting to flat roofs. Yeah. It? So we, we'll be carrying on what we've been doing. So, mm. so anyone have, else have any comments? So are we opposing it on those grounds or are we? Can we oppose it on those grounds? No, it's not really. You see what I mean? We can I can expect a comment only. So make a comment then, yes. Yeah, we, 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 I can oppose stating that we don't think it's in keeping with the design of the in, entire act. Sure. But, um, but that members might be minded to change their minds if the truth is offered. Mm. Thank you. Pragmatic solution. That's the exact <laughs> word we get. Yes. We oppose, but we would be willing to approve. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So would members be happy with that? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Right. That just leaves some item eight, which has already been approved. This was um, a permitted development rights application. The neighbours were informed. It does meet all the criteria as regards of height and length, and it's a single story, but it has, has been approved, and that's 19 Osprey Walk. It was only for consultation, it, not for consultation, anyway. For information. Yeah. And finally, um, a tree one, which was 20 Waglands Garden, which Catherine did do a round robin of everybody, and we'll approve the trimming of this Thuya hedge, um, which uh, they've been done, it has been done regularly over the years, and continues to be done, so. So, um, Planning decisions. Now, at the last meeting, we didn't go through these because uh, we were generally concerned with applications before us. So I'm going to start on the page of the December agenda. Just you may not all have it with you, but just to remind you, um, first of all, the land between 38 Morton Road and the old police station, erection of nine detached dwellings, which we strongly opposed, was refused by the Shire Councillor. Um, a number of reasons, harm to the immunity of existing residents, inadequate parking, inappropriate housing mix, no affordable housing under the new VALP. 25% of houses must be affordable if it's a development of 0.3 of a hectare or more. So it's cramped and there is no section 106 um, contribution to the town. Most of this, of course, is in the Buckingham Neighbourhood Development Plan. So we're obviously feeling very pleased that the planning officer, she obviously read our plan carefully when they came to this decision. So that is very much um, one, in, one in defence of our, our plan. Um, 8 Sandhurst Drive was proposed two storey side extension, which we opposed, and that's been refused as well over, for, on the reasons of overdevelopment and lack of parking. Um, right, there was planning inspectorate report on Pytel Crescent in Western Avenue, demolition of the 20 garages and the erection of 16 uh, two story, sorry, eight, eight two story apartments. And that was refused largely on the fact that there was an area tree planning, uh, tree preservation order. Trees would be harmed, so the planning inspector. The development would be harmful to the character and the appearance of the area. Tree protection policies in the BNDP, he noted, and also the failure to provide an acceptable outlook for occupiers. And again, the inspector drew very much on the Buckingham Neighbourhood Development Plans. So again, it's good to see that it has been playing its part in uh, protecting us. Um, whether or not the the, the uh, applicants, the housing trust are going to be appealed, the housing trust will appeal or not, we don't know yet. Um, he dismissed the appeal, refused the application. So, I thought it was a change in the Yeah. Right. 
And that brings us up to the current list that Catherine provided us with on tonight's agenda. Um, approved, although we again strongly opposed it, was the conversion of the gym to residential flats at 28 Candlewood Court. Um, there was quite a big report about this in the planning officer's uh, recommendations, but she felt just finding it, right? Yeah, she felt that uh, these flats could quite easily be put there, provided that they had acid etch effect film to a height of one meter on all bedroom windows, adjustable louvers and shutters, uh, planters in front of the windows would further mitigate this. She also said that uh, there's a riverside amenity area of a large area of green space to the northeast of the site and future occupants of the flats would have good access to good quality outdoor space right on their doorstep. Um, she seemed to overlook the fact that well, she thought that it would be under one metre of water when it flooded. So she's got her, her dynamics somewhat wrong there. But um, everything that we said it shouldn't be done for, she said it should be done for, should plan commission good could be done. So that, that's been approved. Um, 19 <laughs> Ridge Street, this is a change of, sorry, Councillor Satchby wanted to comment on that. I think we should at least put a note in the minutes of those reasons what were granted. It's always a good thing to record those statements because at a later stage, we may be able to refer back to them. So I think those things need to be recorded in the minutes because I fear we'll be referring back to them at a later stage. And I think if we haven't minuted it, it's a public record of what was said, then it's important. The site has got some tragic history and this might be something we refer back to. Is that, yeah, is that okay? Uh, it's important. Thank you, everyone happy with that? Can we do that? Thank you, yes. Right, so moving on to 19 Bridge Street, change of use the ground floor dwelling of a house to hot food takeaway and dry cleaners. Uh, Councillor Stutch, we called that in on our behalf. We opposed it very strongly and it has been refused. There's a very comprehensive report on why it should be refused. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point we should pay tribute to Catherine Dixon, the case officer, who took the brave move of overruling highways. Yeah. Highways came up with a report saying that uh, after not once, but and came back and did a second report having reviewed local comments, which were ours, but reached the same conclusion that there was no problem. The officer in refusing the site included it was harmful to highway safety. So we should make what we think of that. Councillor Stutchman? I think this is a case um, in point where um, those who made the objections to this have won out. I think it's very often that we are on the other side of it where we've made really poignant points about how a development affects it. And we went out, I think we should agree to um, make a, a, a press release around this because it was quite contentious, this application in the public. There was lots said about it. And we should um, um, ask that the chairman and the, and the mayor or whoever's appropriate makes a release about it, including the fact that it was called to committee, didn't get to committee. So obviously the calling aspect of it meant that um, the, the officer saw that it was called into committee, which was built upon the comments of this council. Um, so they didn't want the opportunity to discuss it at committee and they took a proper action to prevent it from taking place. And I think we need to make people aware of it in case it returns. Because they'd be like, yeah, it may return. So I think we do need to celebrate your success. Um, I think it's important because people don't know what you do here and they don't know that you actually do make a difference. And I think this is a case where you have made a solid difference as a committee. So I think you should, I would recommend that you, you, you talk about it. Thank you, Robert. Councillor Troy. Thank you. Yeah, on this um, point of highways, we've heard and we liaise with um, planning officers that uh, Buckinghamshire highways. Do we know their criteria? 
You know, do they come out? Do they look on maps? We just hear the word, oh, highways have put a report in, but we don't, well, I don't know. Highways are statutory funds on trees, just as we are. So the officer asks for their comment, whether they come out and actually look at the site or do it by that local street view, is up to them. He clearly hadn't looked at it the first time because he didn't actually clock that there was a pedestrian crossing right by the entrance. Well, this is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. do, do we know sort of their criteria, so their list of tick boxes? Obviously, our comment prompted <laughs> me to actually either look at it and probably on the map or actually come out and, and see it. I mean, a lot of them have not been coming out to go to the next sites because of COVID. Um, but you cannot take a picture of the access to this site without bits of pedestrian crossing in it from street view, because I've tried it from all sorts of different angles and there is no way you can get a decent picture of the front of the site without a bit of traffic light or something. Mm -hmm. But everything that we said was wrong about the highways aspect, it was a five-way junction, there was a pedestrian crossing right there, cars coming out of the, this development okay. would have to stick their noses out into the road yeah. to see. Uh, the pavement on the other side of the road comes to a dead end, people have to cross over yeah. and cross across the eastern side of the bridge. Um, school children, there's old, old, elderly old, people. Older people from the Every, county. Everything was wrong with it. And highways just completely ignored all this. It wasn't the only reason. He was... even stated that his, in his opinion, the vision display was adequate. Yeah. Well, it is if you're standing in a different way, but if you're sitting in a car with a bonnet in front of you, no, it isn't really. Yeah, this is what I can't understand, you know. Mm. It's, it's... Mm. So, I mean, the, the other parts of the, the refusal, um, it was considered there were significant concerns with regard to the operation of the site. It would be harmful to living condition of adjoining mm -hmm. occupiers um, by intensification of very pedestrian movements, light late, light, late night operation, fume and odor controls, harmful to the visual character of the area, um, and the hard surface in the whole front of the curtilage, and therefore absence of any landscaping across the in front of the site, and she finished off, finally it's considered the proposals would be harmful to highway safety, given the restricted access to the site and the likelihood of on-street parking yeah. arising. But the initial one, Chairman, is that there are the higher authority. It shouldn't have been that wrong no. in the first place. Mm. You know, they well, should rely on us little people at the bottom of the chain here. They should have... Well, it's not the first time at Highways. I know, I know. Tonight, we've got two more coming up in a moment where we've said there's not enough parking and Highways have approved them. And, uh, so I'm going to... I, Who I, are I, these I, anonymous highway people, you know? They're not. Are they the highway men, you know, these days? I think we shouldn't um, tread into whether an Highways officer made a bad decision and we are wrong. Clearly, the planning officer made a good decision. So that's what we should concentrate on, that the planning officer had the foresight to make the good decision. Clearly her grounds for making that recommendation were strong enough to convince it by law. That is a question for the highway department internally to ask themselves, why would a planning officer have the grounds to overrule a highway officer? And that would be something I imagine they would talk about. What we shouldn't do is cite individual officers for, um, for chastisation, really. Um, I think what it does show us is that when this original application came in, um, it's got some history in it. It, was, it came in as a both district and Buckinghamshire council operation in the year where there was a transmuted authority, which meant that the district and the Buckinghamshire were a, a combined authority for that year. It then went into the next year where it, it was under COVID and camera and it's come out at the other end in a year when we're meeting. So clearly people meeting and being able to talk to each other produce better decisions because I can imagine they had a meeting about this and, uh, and took the right decision. So let's concentrate on the positive. But I do think further down the line, we do have to take on what Councillor Trice says about understanding um, highway officers' recommendations to this, and maybe they're going to be part of a combined view in the same office now. I'm presuming they're speaking, and that's a question 
for a different officer, which I'm quite happy to, um, without chastising individuals who work in a workplace, to, to look at another day. But I think concentrate on the positives here is that your views have been recognised by a plane officer on a contentious application. That's a win. Let's take a win and let's leave the negative to one side because it's not so often we win on something which was quite important. Um, chastised our view of children access in there, all the disability access, the, where it was cited and everything which has been said. So it's a big win. That's why I was suggesting that we should be public about this. Concentrate on the positives uh, of this and then maybe we'll have even more positives in the future. I think, um, because it's a combined department looking at things now. I agree with the positives, but as far as the negatives are concerned, I'm quite appalled by this highways report, and I would like this referred I, I, to the cabinet member. I, I'm, happy, I'm happy to take that section with um, the questions worded to me. I'm happy to take that as a separate issue to the cabinet member to ask the question why they were so averse to the original, to the final decision in their recommendation. I think that's, um, that's reasonable. Um, yeah. I think that's a reasonable action. Yeah. But to talk about this strengthens the negatives against our, our good decision. So we should split, split it down to the positives and address the negative. I'm happy with Catherine's help to address that question to the cabinet member to ask why. Because I think we do need to understand why, because there needs to be some work done address the chairman's concerns and council tries rightful points made they need to be addressed but today's a thing to be joyous about isn't it it's essentially the positive yeah mm. but if you if you had a planning officer who wasn't as strong-minded as she obviously was you know she might have said well, oh highways said it's okay i don't think mm -hmm. i don't think chairman we can recommend she does all the bucket of that <laughs> but um, um but if she's that good we're likely to lose her so that's a yeah. <laughs> as chairman of the planning committee i think the question should be asked you know how did highways arrive at their recommendation mm -hmm. have they visited the site have they seen that it was, it was a nightmare just an mm -hmm. absolute traffic nightmare this one couldn't have a worse place, could mm. it? I'm, I'm, it, what, it? What do the committee think? Do we think we should pursue that? Or? I'm happy to do it if you want me to, but I need guidance on the word and everything. Well, we, could, could I suggest that we write, really? Would that be better? Because then we can set it out very clearly, yeah. you know, the, the reasons why we opposed it yeah. and um, see what response we get rather than sending... In, well, I can um, do it anyway, whether you ask me or not, but um, <laughs> um, I, don't, I just want to I do just it wonder what's the most appropriate way of... I would prefer what you're saying, Margaret, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's up to members yeah. that we do right to the, the cabinet and be concerned. Yeah. And just, just drawing attention to... <clears> the concerns we've got. Concerns about right? this high-rates report on, on this particular mm -hmm. site. And we could also, at the same time, throw in, you know, we're also concerned at the increase in the number of... Uh, um, approvals where the parking patently is not does not conform with regulations. Mm. You know. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Martin? Well, again, trying to accentuate the positive uh, and not dwell on the negative. Uh, happy to do that because we would like to understand what their thought was behind it originally. But um, coming back to what I said, this was just the the trigger for um, my thought pattern of how do highways get to it. We've heard from the planning officers, generally, you know, what we have to say, we can't say this, you know, we've had some guidance there. We may need it from the highways point of view, and then we can understand their thought patterns overall, um, you know, not for any particular um, individual. Well, they have, there were two reports from him there to read, so that yeah. gives yeah, yeah, but, but, I mean, yeah, but, you know, outside of this case, just their overall view of, you know, where they get the information. What's the, what's the criteria? Know, what could we do to maybe give them more information yeah. that they could I rely upon? If I could advise you a little bit, write to the cabinet member at one point, which is fine. He'll ask the director of service to do something and he'll pass it down to the next officer to write the, the report. So... You can go through to the director of service um, and copy the cabinet member into it because with the director, service director, 
who has overall of the department, the cabinet member has oversight of the work of the director. And it's him who's got overall professional responsibility in the office to see that there's some cohesion <coughs> decisions. And he seems to be a work of work of workabout man, workabout person. So I think that's where I would advise you go to the director, copy the cabinet member in, and um, and that way you 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 might circumvent the delay. Um, I could explain that at a later date, but you can circulate the delay because um, the cabinet member will have to seek advice. He won't know the answer. No. And, and if he did, he'd be an absolute genius with the amount of applications in Buckinghamshire if he knew the answer to this question, wouldn't he? My, my response to that one is the cabinet members are always saying if you have any concerns, bring them to us in the first place. Well, you are. Yeah. But you're doing it so that he's... You're not waiting for him to write to his director. I'd have thought send it to the cabinet member with a copy to the director. But well, you do what you like. I always yeah, do it one way or another. But, so, um, what, what do members feel that we should do this? If Catherine and I, between us, just, just formulate a letter that we can send them. They all agree. Thank you for that. Um, the other one, yes. So Bandit Verney Close was another one we lost. We opposed the removal of four trees to allow development. Um, mm -hmm. hmm? Sorry, this is again, top of top. Yeah. Uh, Mallard Drive, two to two Mallard Drive, enclosure of public open space and one point eight meters in the fence. That's the one we opposed. Yeah. And as I mentioned briefly at the last meeting, um, that has been refused. And the reasons for refusal was it's a loss that it was mm -hmm. a building on amenity land. Mm -hmm. Um, which again comes back yeah. to the one we were doing with earlier this yeah. evening. So in that case, on the Hartlands, there was a planning covenant saying that no open spaces could be built on. Um, so enforcement will now have to open, ensure that that 1.8 metre fence is removed at the entrance to the Hartlands estate. Um, land at Verney, close, I just mentioned the four trees removed to allow development and prune the two new trees. We opposed it, but that has gone through. Um, and reducing the U away from the site entrance, we opposed. Again, fairly close. That was approved. We have, though, however, asked for a pre preservation rule <coughs> on the, what's left of the U's. And then finally, oh, sorry, Martin. Uh, did they suggest of any replanting um, once they'd finished their development? The four trees that they wanted to remove entirely now have building on top of these places they were in. So that they're not there is new planting to go in. It wasn't a very interesting choice of plants. It's mostly low-maintenance shrubs. Um, and by the time they have filled that site with the block of flats, not going to be a lot of room for trees. Hmm. And again, this is why we're trying to get this meeting with the county free officer and all of his mm -hmm. colleagues. We've been trying for six months now. It's not been easy. Mm -hmm. Councillor Stutchby. I mean, trees are an ongoing question, aren't they, in Buckingham? Um, there is a motion which you can discuss. I'm going to council about trees and the ongoing, what we do about the canopy in Buckingham. It would have been on the previous um, agenda, but Councillor Margaret Gate was conscious because of COVID that we shortened the meeting. So it was, we agreed to drop it off the agenda. Um, so it will be coming back on the next agenda, um, which will be later than what I wanted to discuss it. And that is about trees because we are losing our green canopy in Buckingham. There's also was an interesting article I read the other day about yew trees and that some of the yew trees we've got in this country predate Stonehenge. So these have got, you know, they are and that substantial trees not being taken into consideration of, period. Now, whether it's a substantial tree being 150 years old, 500 years old, they're going to outlift all of this around here. And I'm quite attached to yew trees as um, period. So um, I think we need, need to um, hopefully we'll discuss that at another time, make a stand because um, once our canopy is gone, um, they take out more carbon out of the atmosphere than, than any um, 
um, the large trees suck more carbon in than any of the ones we were fortunate of to, to join our mayor plant at the weekend for the Majesty of the Queen. Um, those are going to take a long time to they suck out the amount of carbon out the atmosphere that any one of these big trees do. So there's a big question there about trees. And I think the, the pendulum's going the wrong way in Buckingham at the moment when it comes to our mature trees. We lost a load at Page Hill. We lost a load in, um, um, down Chandos Road just recently, didn't we, um, to development. And, and they were mature trees on the old grammar school stroke, Wadlands Garden area. And, and, and we are under threat. And, it, and once it's gone, it's gone. We can't get it back. Not in our lifetime anyway. Um, so I, I think that all this stuff about trees is something we need to seriously take. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a dichotomy, isn't there, in the policies of the Buckinghamshire Council. The dichotomy is that they say we want to plant 500,000 trees. So I questioned them about this. Yeah, you still haven't got a consistent policy about protecting the trees that you've got. You're very willingly take them out at the same time as making us a great deal about planting 500 whips. Um, and I questioned them about that at, 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 at the, at earlier at the finance meeting. Do you think we've got a big issue here? And once we've lost our trees in Buckingham, we'll never get them back, as I said. No. And we need to make a strong stand against this. Mm. If we may not win the fight, but we should at least have the argument and the discussion about it. Thank you, everyone. Then finally, um, final approved application is 31 Bortonville, old friend coming back to Story Road Extension. We opposed it because of the desperate lack of parking, but highways have no, no problem with that and it's been approved. So that ends the planning decisions. Um, Sorry, Martin. Well, is this another one that we're going to ask then? Yeah, that, that's why I said earlier. Yeah, we would add. No, you just you didn't say it now. But <laughs> add a couple of things. Yeah. Yes. So you know. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Hi, right, um, I to make Buckinghamshire Council matters to receive news of Buckinghamshire Council new documents and other information from Buckinghamshire Council members. Um, Councillor Stutchbury. Firstly, the positive today. I been chasing, which you will know, town centre lights um, to be replaced. You will be aware that there's a whole fair of town centre lights which run from across the old water site, which have been out now for a amount of time. I've just had a response this evening from the officer to say that he's ordered the parts and we can anticipate them being repaired. That doesn't mean they are repaired, but that's a long way forward than we were six or eight months ago when we first well before that we've been discussing this sorry where are these these are Andy you what, explain where Wool, Woolworths is oh, used to be those yeah. lights there yeah. never know yeah <laughs> I mean they, they were noticeable when we had the uh, music in the market about yeah. Gem yeah. yeah and how dark yeah. it was we discussed it didn't we Andy they're the ones on the buildings and they yeah, the building, Andy yeah. said yeah. something's got to be done so we yeah. did as Andy said and, um, and um, so anyway on the other thing I am pursuing an answer over the um, application for the health centre. I'm awaiting a response on that to assess what the current legal position of that application is. Um, I've been following up numerous other things in regards to um, developments, and I've also been chasing up, um, and thanks for some, some really smart assistance from Catherine over um, some, some of the paperwork to do with the section 106 of the Tindrick Road. It's evident, isn't it, there's a challenge. Forget the consultation of the Tindrick Road, which we all support the 30 mile an hour limit, at which this council was the first people to raise the fact in our Buckinghamshire plan. But we also, this council, um, in its previous evolutions in 2015, 2016, struggled and fought together to get a cycleway along the railway walk and the scenic walk. I'm pushing to try and get an answer about installation of that and when they start work with it. Because regardless of the outcome of the Tindrick Road discussion, we do need safe access routes for the children out of this development. Um, Prompto before everyone decides to use the vehicle to go around the road. 
That's what we planned, what we worked hard as as a council to get included. So I'm chasing that up. I've also, this week, feel it's appropriate after the decision on Ozu Way to try and start some discussions as a local member about what the intentions are in the section 106 for that development. These are all big things that are going to affect the way we live with each other, the way we affect each other. And I don't think I'm on my own in these opinions. I'm just fortunate to be in a place where I can ask questions. So I'm doing that. Um, I'm also will be returning to health later in the month, which is which will be where I'm working with the chairman of the HASC to answer some of these questions I raised earlier to do with planning and whatever, because we've got to take an overview of health concerns. What I will say is what concerns me is there seems to be little um, direction in the bail plan, which was agreed with such a fanfare of success, which has caused so much grief to different communities in Buckingham. There's little fanfare in there about health provision. And there's many other things in that which are lacking in that plan, which is the legal document, which they're basing decisions on to do with section 106 agreements. We all around here know these problems. So we've got a big challenge ahead of us to try and um, get a proper conversation over all these things to affect us. Because all the development presently um, has even been things that we didn't want or were against the neighbourhood plan. So, and the section 106 have not been given anything to Buckingham. So I think those are, that's enough, but I'm doing those sorts of things today. And it was nice to have a positive notes before I come to the meeting tonight to say that we've resolved that life. So, and when they all go on, um, knowing Margaret wishing to get lights at the Tindrick Road, perhaps you get a picture of Margaret actually under some lights that actually work, um, <laughs> you know, in the town centre. Um, I would say that the bracket lights are quite a long way up the building, so you're going to have to lie on well, I know, but we can generally get the ambience of a lit area. Um, uh, this is something that we want at the Tindrick Road. We're going to the Tindrick Road site again, irrespective of the outcome of the consultation. There's, a, there's an issue which we're going to have to think very long and hard how to resolve, is how can we get, um, as Councillor Mark Gately pushed in the paper, how do we get street lights on the area of the road where there isn't any? Because irrespective of getting the cycleway built eventually, it's about safe access for those people out of that state. And I think we're all around here about virtual signaling around it. We're all on the same side. We're quite concerned about it. So I think we need to um, approach that. And it's something that I'm going to approach. That's why I'm approaching the what I can do, because it's in a legal document, is say, I want that done. I, why aren't you doing it? When can we get it delivered? Because that will, in itself, push the other element. I'm quite happy to... I have shared my correspondence um, with, the, with the clerk, because I thought it was probably she saw what I was saying. Also, she can have a slight chuckle at the wording of my language in the emails which is always cheers everybody um, to see some of the words I put in. But um, but I do think we have found that, and that's enough. But I mean, they're, they're things I am doing, and that's what I've been doing just before Christmas, mm -hmm. over Christmas and after Christmas. Thank you, Robin. Any questions of Robin? No, thank you. Um, held over from December 20th, meeting 82, was to receive and discuss the cabinet member's response to a written question put by Councillor Stuffbury on planning and staffing levels. Robin? Um, do you want to read it out, Ken? Because I'm kind of in front of you. Um, right. I haven't got it right in front of me at the moment. Oh, there you go. Coming over. Oh, some windows. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it, it gives us a breakdown, which is in the minutes, of, of the amount of staff They've got like the shortages from highways management, one, six in building control, four in technical services, um, three in planning, um, four in senior planning officers, two principal officers, 
and it goes into what they're going to seek to address this. So they've clearly got a problem with employment of planning officers. I think that rather than I spoke enough tonight, really, for everybody to put up with, but but the um, it does go into great detail. Can I suggest that we include the statement of it in the minutes? And if anyone's read it, want to ask me questions, I ask questions, answer those questions rather than read something you've already read, which doesn't seem very succinct to do it, but it is appropriate. This question came out of your concerns that you'd raised in this meeting about the inability of planning applications um, being determined and your concerns about S106 and everything else. So it is there, um, it is within our minutes as a public response now, and it's within the minutes of that. So I think that's how I would like to proceed. If you've got any other questions on it? No. Thank you for that, Robert. Can I ask that it, it, with your permission that we include it in the minutes? Because we probably will have to refer back to it. Mm. Yep. That's okay. Thank you very much. At a later date. Very helpful. Thank you, Chairman. I haven't got it to hand. Um, item eight three is to receive and discuss the response from highways on the condition of top angel. Which again is in your planning agenda pack tonight. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, Sorry, um, uh, did you want me to, to speak on this? You can see the response is unsatisfactory. The response suggests that um, um, with, a, with an answer like, um, oh, it hasn't made the funding um, uh, a flippant remark about Council Stutchbury, I thought you couldn't make the meeting. The reason I couldn't make the meeting, I got a meeting with um, Children's Services to discuss the fact that their attainment levels and standards um, were to as my liking, and the meeting was rearranged three times. The top angel isn't something that they've not known about for a long period of time. It appears from this that it isn't being taken seriously. And I do think the only way I can see we address this is to bring this to their attention in the development for Ozier Way, that they're actually going to be building a development with a failed road on the outskirts of it to see if we can actually get the developer to amend it, as the council seems unwilling to amend it and unwilling to put the resources into it, even though, as I pointed out to them, that it was our major industrial park in Buckingham, which employs a large amount of our people. And it appears that we, over a number of years, a number of councillors have continuously asked these questions. It's never taken very seriously. Have you pointed out that if there were to be an accident at the bypass end of the industrial park, that is the only emergency exit from the O of the industrial estate? I've, off I've offered to meet the cabinet member on site, and he hasn't taken that up. I mean, he's he's got several emails to me, he hasn't answered. Um, but yes, I mean, if you, if you had, I don't know, a tanker fire or something on, on, on display, everybody would have, I have got got on top eight. I'll return to you, I've got a meeting with the Lance, which is unfair on local area technicians, because they, they have no reason or way of resolving this, but it hasn't got into the funding, um, capital funded. Every person who goes up there knows it's failed so I'm surprised in my if what it's saying if I am not at a meeting uh, um, it doesn't get in because two other members who were at that meeting didn't raise it even though it had been raised previously in other meetings or lap meetings when this is the meeting before it. I'm very concerned but the only thing I can suggest for the correspondence is that we I'll carry on arguing the toss with it but I do think we do, we do as a council, where it be in Buckingham Town Council, need to actually point this out to the developers that they that they cannot build a housing estate with a failed piece of highway, which they're relying on because the two entrances come out, which Mark smiling about. Well, um, before I go to Council I will just point out that letter was dated the 14th of December to you in reply. Yeah. Two days later, on the 16th, Ozio Way was approved. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. mm. yes, thank you. It just seems a rather odd argument in the letter because they're more or less acknowledging that there's a problem, but saying, well, because we'd have to close the road, it would be too disruptive to mend it. And 
you know, the thing is, the point is, if that road needs mending, then they need to sort out a way of doing it, don't they? And they also don't seem to have addressed the issue because it's on an industrial estate, there's a lot of heavy traffic Correct. using that road. And so that failed surface is going to get worse and worse, and it's going to become more of a problem. Not, well, not it's the right. 18 wheelers that are doing the damage, yeah. and the ones are going in and out of the factory. So the sooner they can sort it, the better. They can't just, it, you know, it's almost ostrich mentality, isn't it? <laughs> Um, you know, it's going to be so oh dear, it's going to be so hard to do this because we've got to shut the road and how will we manage kind of idea. So we're not, oh, let's not bother to do it. It's too difficult. Especially Buckingham, that's why. He has an angel looking off. Of course, they never close any roads in the castle. Oh, yeah. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you, Robin. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. If you could, yeah. could yeah. keep that. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would, would it be, and um, I'm pretty tepid and chastised by this matter I've been I've been chasing it up for quite a number of years actually I was chasing it up in 2014 2015 I was chasing it up it's piece have gone on long enough I think that this now must be the oldest piece of failed highway in Buckinghamshire and perhaps we should ask for a, um, a, a date of when it was first reported and if it is the oldest failed highway in Buckinghamshire or perhaps we should just um, agree that we make a press release about our discontent about it's not being fixed. So that the other discussions that we have down there um, in Buckinghamshire might deserve, because Margaret's called out all the relevant sensible points, which I didn't say actually, did I? <laughs> but you did, um, um, about the, the nonsense of the answer. I was just angry about the answer. So thank you, Margaret. I think Margaret's what she said is actually what we should say in a press release about uh, that we are uh, collectively upset after receiving the response that it doesn't address this major thing. And we care about that. And taking the point that Mark said, which is two days after they gave permission for the application. And I think that's strong enough in itself. If, you know, um, didn't need any words to do that. I think you both covered it really. Sorry, the Borton Park Bridge as well. well, for, well three, that's, no, three years now. Let's not overcomplicate that. As I think that I would no, ask that we do a press release about our joint concern after receiving this response, yeah. and which seemed to focus on my attendance rather more than it did. I mean, I know I go to lots of meetings, but if I'm not there, it, it suggests that nothing happens, uh, which I think is. A real shame for the other two councillors. Accentuate the positive councillor, Stathbury. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> but I was arguing for children to get a proper education at the it's same interesting, time. Interesting to ask that this is one of the, the less severely affected areas. What are the others looking at? Anyway, is everyone happy with that, that we, we, we should do that? Thank mm. you very much. Uh, the last item on the council matters, um, is the updated list of opposing call, potential call ins. Thank you very much for that, Catherine. Can Catherine. We... Uh, sorry, Margaret. <laughs> Can I just ask the second item on the list, land adjacent to 73 Morton Road, is that the site opposite the police station? Yeah. yeah. Because and the, a little sort of sign has gone up in the last couple of weeks oh. um, indicating some builders. I, don't, I haven't. I can't remember. Yes, they have. They have been slowly ticking through the uh, discharge of conditions. Very. Only yes, obviously. The, sorry. There's huge concern about I mean, Morton Road and the track on Morton Road. I mean, probably this this horse, this ship has already sailed. But you know, if they are going to build those houses there, there's some houses by the police station. I know that that particular application has been refused, but no doubt they'll submit another. Yeah, that was for nine houses. It probably come back yeah. less. Maybe. And then all the ones on Mace Morton 3. Mace 3, yeah. Um, you know, it's going to be a complete nightmare mm -hmm. down there. And I just see that that, I don't think that's been mentioned, that land adjacent to 73 Morton Road for some while. I mean, right. is there a, no, that's all been dormant, has it really? It, yes. Um, they, there's a, a lot. Of, I mean, only on Saturday, I finally got a decision on the 2020 application. There's only 18 months old. Mm. 
And it just depends on how soon the applicant gets its finger out because those are, you get all the conditions. Some of them are just, you've got to start within three years of this decision. Some of them are, you've got to provide us with archeological report of the land or suds want to be absolutely certain that the, it's permeable enough to put hard standing on and still have the rain drain them. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't get on with that, once they've got the nominal approval, if you like, um, they can take as long as they like with the rest. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing we can do about it. I don't think there's any sanctions that um, mm -hmm. Aylesbury can have. No. Um, and once, once the process has started, it proceeds at the pace that the applicant dictates. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, item line then, Buckinghamshire Council committee meetings. There were no Buckinghamshire applications, Buckingham applications, 15th of December or the 12th of January for the North Bucks Area Committee. Strategic sites. Um, I attended the 16th of December, as did Robin on the Ozio Way application. Um, I followed that up um, after the agreement of Catherine and the clerk with a statement to the Buckingham advertiser, which they used, um, which we basically said, although we're disappointed that the new Baylor Wellesley plan has overridden our neighbourhood plan, as this was an employment area, we have worked closely with Waits to make sure that we get the most out of the 420 dwellings. Um, they're going, they are going to provide 35%, which they said they'd do originally, even though there's no obligation under the new BAP. 15% uh, of those will be accessible, and we have asked the bungalows amongst them there's a growing call for bungalows for people who want to downsize free up their mm -hmm. three or four bedroomed houses for, for families but they can't if, if they want to stay in Buckingham because they haven't got anywhere to go mm -hmm. so wait mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be looking on that um, benignly I raised a number of issues with the strategic committee notably the, the, the estates on the other side of the bypass from the town there's no schools shops, mm. leisure facilities, meeting place, or any other communal assets, apart from uncovered play areas, which as Catherine would tell you aren't much fun to sit in the rain. And um, the housing replaces what was our employment area E. Um, so the employment opportunities have been greatly reduced. The committee said, well, of course, you have got designated employment areas at Silverstone and at Westcott. <laughs> which is a great help. Eight miles and 15 miles away, respectively, by the accessible by public transport. Mm. Oh, yeah. So the need to use cars is going to continue to be a big problem on, on this estate, as, as indeed it, you know, we foresee was going to happen on Rumbold's fields. Young children can't be expected to walk a mile or more to school, and weekly shopping cannot be done on a bicycle. I asked for the Buckingham transport strategy to be reinstated as a policy for this of all future developments, including funding towards the provision of the Western Relief Road, um, for a Buckingham education strategy to be formulated to cope with extra housing from all the new estates, and that Buckingham Town Council and Gorka and Lambert Parish Council, which will be affected by it, should be consulted on the terms of Section 106 agreements from its initial draft stage through to delivery. We should also be consulted about the design code, particularly with reference to the Buckingham design code. We will, of course, get a further opportunity to comment on this development when the reserve matters, the detailed plans come back before us. But we will continue to push for all the above, which is what, what this committee agreed. If I could just, Martin, before I come to you, just one thing I'd like to add. Um, there has been a lot of concern that the Section 106 agreement for this had no provision at all for um, health. And on Wednesday, I will be attending the Parish and Town Council Forum. And a question I have raised, one of the questions I've raised, Catherine, has also, is the lack of Section 106 agreement health funding for new developments. Uh, Roy Vanderpol from Winslow has said that they've had 325 dwellings in Winslow with no health provision. We've got 420 dwellings off those in way with no specified contribution towards improving medical or health provision, despite, and I'm going to quote from government papers, such agreements being measures that developers must take to reduce their impact on the community. So hopefully 
we'll get a question for that. I know that Robin himself will be um, raising these matters as well at county level. Robin? Yeah, just to say that... Um, I apologise, Martin, I was coming back to you. Is it all right? Yeah, no, just to say that the meeting was as it was. Um, it wasn't um, how we wanted it, and we were all carpeted in by the Vale Plan. The Vale Plan is the problem. The Vale Plan is the problem, period. It is, it is causing us lots of problems. It doesn't even recognise the, the wisdom of the individuals that drafted it, didn't recognise that there was health provision, because it was drafted in a, in a, in a silo of a district level, where it didn't recognise many things, in fact, infrastructure, roads, whatever, but the health division didn't recognise. I've just been offered a meeting while I sat in here with an officer to discuss Section 106 to do with um, with the... Oh, well, I might take that up. Um, um, while I'm sat in the meeting. So, um, but I do think we need to pursue these things because I don't sure where we've got the legal grounds. Because I'm not sure when we listen to... Chairman said the determination. There was questions asked by um, Mr. Newcomb in the planning application. Mr. Newcomb questioned them intensely about how you could get health provision out of this, and the answers came back. Well, there isn't any in, in the Vale plan which covers that. I think Mr. Newcomb was doing his barrister thing, which is to actually start asking his questions before he does his prosecution because he was a prosecution barrister. Um, so we are really vulnerable. And, and this is the Vale plan needs to be overridden with something better as quickly as possible because we can't persist with this. But we are where we are. I spoke about the um, issues to do with access. I was disappointed that the proposer of the application felt that the bit on the Borkett Road, the crossing, was quite all right. It's not all right. No child crossing that road so you know, <laughs> going to be in the position that I want my children to be in. And the housing estate recreation field will consist of kicking a football against the, um, against a, 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 an industrial site, which if I was a small boy, I'd be playing football in the industrial site because it's level ground, isn't it? Play spot against a garage door because um, there's nothing up there. And the site is never should have been agreed as it is. And it never should have, and it's made no contribution to amenity land or a community space. We need a, and so it's basically um, done anything and it's split the boundary between two parishes. So it, that's done. We just need to see what we can do collectively to see if there's any way we can get something out of this for the community in the section 106. And I don't think the poultry contributions of a footpath and, and a couple of, um, um, crossings on the bypass is going to do anything to um, make those children like the thing that I you can watch the webcast thing if it's still up what, what I found quite challenging was the suggestion that our children could always use the bridal way to get to um, Lay Sill School to which I pointed out to them that their parents might not want to wash their clothes every day um, and we had got past the stage of children walking across the field to school. There was no understanding of where the site was. There seemed to be no recognition of the problems. I, I, they never walk the five-year-old for half an hour to school, no, half I, an hour at the end of the day back. Well, yeah, the idea that there is a bridal way was the words that they could use, couldn't they? What is the service on the bridal way? Which, if you was decision an application, you'd have thought the person would have found out what the service was on that as he was determining the application. You know, it's another service, it's a mud track. So the idea is that Buckingham children can be put on a mud track across the field to school and the parents can use their washing machines every night because it's the safest route across that field, yes. with no doubt, if, to get to school. But it won't get them to the secondary school and it won't get them to the grammar school. It's just a tragedy and, and a, a, a misunderstanding about Buckingham. And as I say, the Vale Plan delivers again for Aylesbury and doesn't deliver for Buckingham. That's, and I pointed that out when I spoke about it at council and I told them that in point blank terms, but um, they still voted it through. Thank you, Robin. Um, Martin. Um, of uh, OD away. We know the entrance is just by the Vale Road. 
but a lot of heavy vehicles. And today there were three coaches parked up there mm. opposite uh, yeah. the factory. You know, we're going to have to think about yellow lines along there because with 420 houses and the traffic coming out, you can't have that sort of uh, um, parking up there. My no, problem as well. I, I mean, there is no, there's other places worse than that. We've had the letter tonight. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's, it's the less severe it's problem. It's the less severe <laughs> problem. I mean, if they have to put yellow lines up there, they'll have to at some point stop somebody coming down there. So, Martin, please don't suggest something like that. I mean, do you want to hit the other one? No, I won't, Martin. I mean, <laughs> But I mean, oh no, you don't. I mean, I know you work in, uh, have been so hard working on the pantomime. Thank you, but don't, but don't bring pantomime into the meeting, please. Uh, interesting fact the officer has to restore that drive because they're going to, because there is on street parking up there, they're going to restrict it so that um, vehicles can get through to the police station. Uh, and they're, they're going to make a, a sort of a parking lay by. As if there wasn't enough for us. Never mind. Um, <laughs> yes. if, 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 Don't you start. <laughs> if, if, you'd like, if you'd like the full notes, I think it, um, it ran, to, my, my full notes of the meeting ran to 10 pages. But that's including the map. <laughs> Thank you. But yes, <laughs> Councillor Newcomb was excellent. Um, he re asked really pointed questions like, well, if you haven't put it in, why can't you put it in? You can put electric <laughs> charging points in after the fact. Why can't you, you know? And I thought, oh, <laughs> he was good, wasn't he? Ask him the questions. He didn't vote correctly, but he no, asked. He voted, he voted according to what he was supposed to vote, but uh, he said a lot of things in between whilst that made people sit up. If I could actually quote Councillor Newcomb, I did note it. He said, We need to encourage neighbourhood plans. It's noticeable that Buckingham's policy for 35% affordable housing has been respected, and all other councils should note this. He said, We must be careful not to sit back and say that the VAL is the only made plan and not look further at neighbourhood mm -hmm. plans. So, mm -hmm. exactly. So, John Harvey's been waiting patiently there, Councillor Harvey. Yeah, was any mention made about sewage? Because one of the concerns I've got is that we're overloading the town yes. system. And they, they, have they, they have, covered yeah. that? Have Anglian Water said that they, they can cope? There, there is further work to be done on that. This is just an outline plan, Councillor Harvey. So detailed plans on all sorts of things have got to be arranged yet. And sewage is one of them. OK. As is Thank the surface you. drainage into the little stream. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah, we, we could we tried to include as much as they could, but it's about a two and a half hour meeting. So it was uh, anyway, thank you very much. Um, the only other strategic site committee would have been on the 20th of January, that was cancelled. Um, moving on to consultations, Winslow neighborhood plan. We hope you've all had a chance to look at that. Very well drawn up plan. And our friends from Winslow have sent it to us asking if we had any comments to make. Um, yeah, thank you. I thought it was really interesting the way they'd included the notion that solar should be included in the developments. And I'm not sure, is that part of our emergence? It will be with, with the new neighbourhood plan, plan, yes. Yeah. Um, so, solar panels, um, electric car charging yeah. points, all new developments. Yeah. So, you know, I thought it was a very positive document. Yeah, well, one, thing does, you know, we can one thing it does jump out is they too have 35% uh, yeah. affordable housing, but as Catherine points out, it's split up a little bit yeah. differently from ours. Yes, it's quite, quite interesting, it's split them up, but it still doesn't take in social, it's only affordable. We do have quite a class of people do with the social level. Mm. I think I think they think so the same thing. Yeah. They do say interchangeable it. terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I I think we should write back to them, thank them for their sharing it with us. And I think we should take the points from it when Gina's better and fit and back at full strength. Um bring them into our neighbourhood plan. Because if it's been a good point made by somebody else, what's the point of not just including it? Um, and, and we should, they'll hopefully have some things from us in future. Um, but I think um, we should thank them. And, and, that, and when it comes to um, all these things, um, we are very much ourselves, aren't we? Um, 
you know, even when it comes to, we've learned, um, if we hadn't had, though we lost the application, uh, OZ way, we gained the affordability numbers in the application. So though we lost, we, we won on a small level. Um, and yeah, so I think that we do need to look at, also we do need to go back and ask them at some point, which I will be doing anyway, they agreed a policy on the 9th of December 2020. Council voted unanimously to agree to look at provision of social housing um, against um, um, affordable housing and key worker houses. That motion was passed unanimously on the 9th of December 2020. What have they done with it? We've got an emerging local plan coming forward. It's council policy hasn't been amended detracted, voted down, or whatever. I've seen little progress in addressing that. And if that doesn't work its way into these sort of decisions, where are we? You know, um, make a decision that council should have an influence over the whole way you look at things. And affordability isn't affordable, let's be honest. We know that. And social housing is the way forward. Thank you, Ron. So, so from happy, we, we, we write to the minister, congratulate mm -hmm. on the plan. Thank you. There is a consultation if anyone wants to take part, um, which is open till February 28th. The link is yeah. on your um, in the minutes. I mean, we are we are their closest neighbours. So. Thank you. Um, item 11: Enforcement to report any new breaches. <coughs> I'm looking up at Councillor Harvey at the moment because normally he's, he's oh, first in. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I've already mentioned this to Catherine and she's well aware of it, but there's a new shop frontage um, on Castle Street where chair the hairdressers used to be. And Catherine has already been on the case and I think it's been raised as a breach. Thank you. That's a change of use as well. And change of change use. Change of use too, yeah. yeah. Thank you, John. Robin? One thing, there is a new team involved in enforcement and the person they appointed name slips my mind, which is rude. Um, so I do think they said they were going to have a consultation with the parishes. Claire Murray. That sounds familiar. Um, I should remember Claire, shouldn't I? Um, um, but they said that they were going to come and consult us. I think it wouldn't be wrong for us to ask when they think they come to us, because we in Buckingham have a lot more planning applications than if they go to, not that they Chapel or somewhere else first to talk, talk to a parish. I think they said they were going to talk to the parishes about what they're going to do to try and get the level of enforcement down and, and create a system where we can start to monitor, which Catherine's been asking for for about three years, and we used to monitor so you could at least track that there was work going on 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 so it so that's in, that's that's a positive. We always say something negative, so that, um, I, I did wish the officer um, good good luck on on her journey. Um, but um, you know, but they are going to do that. And slightly on a skew thing, just for your information, I am still waiting um, for a response to the cabinet member over the enforcement stroke issue to do with the archaeology on the Brackley Road. The last email I got from him was, um, um, which has gone on long enough, was on, on September, they said they need to sort it out. And they've done nothing since September about sorting it out. We've got 80 residents of Buckingham sat in boxes somewhere um, with no determinant burial and um, with no determinant information. So I have asked the cabinet member, it's last year it says, I will get you a response, I do apologise. So, um, you know, I will return to that, but I do definitely think we need to know that because the planning application of that site isn't done. So it's an enforcement of the archaeological works being undertaken because it's our history locked up in boxes. And to be honest, I don't like the thought of not knowing what the outcome to it like. I will carry on with it. Um, and as soon as I get a response, I will furnish it to chairman and the clerk to distribute and um, hopefully it says they're going to pay to actually have the archaeological works done 
so that we can actually find the information because it's the money. Or, and also we don't know what the actual bill is. Because we could, of course, if they say they've got no money and we know what the bill is, perhaps we could crowdfund um, getting our relatives and residents out of boxes, um, the archaeological work. But I think there's more than us who want to know it and we crowdfund things as buying cold coins to put as tokens in the, in the old jail, don't we? So I don't see as it's not something we can do as a community. If the council's unwilling to <coughs> fund Buckinghamshire's history, um, then we'll have to find some other means. But I want to know what these what they are. And I think everybody in Buckinghamshire, particularly um, my Oilsway partner of crime in this, Mr. Grimsdale probably wants to know as well. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Any other breaches? No. Um, item 12, application to file trees. Thank you, Catherine. List attached there. Item 13, Mattis report. Any damage, superfluous, redundant signage, access issues, or other urgent matters? No. Yes. Hmm. Um, item 14, Chairman's items for information. I have two. Um, Catherine has already noted that over the weekend, two applications um, came through. One was the illuminated signage, or not illuminated signage. This is the hairdressers. That's the hairdressers office at the post office. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been given approval for the signage, but Heritage have said that it, it must be noted that. Around the other side. And, the heritage office are noted that the sign cannot be illuminated and if it does enforcement, it's made it's a, internally. a special addendum to the decision sheet. Not a condition, but actually a reminder that if it is found to be illuminated, enforcement action will follow. Mm. Six. Um, the other one, the, the bigger one, is the Evan Co site, which also is known as 12 to 13 Market Hill. This is the application for flats, which have been refused. Um, the proposals do not amount to sustainable development, says Catherine Dixon, who we had mm -hmm. from earlier this evening. The hero of the day, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we offer four reasons. Four reasons were given for refusal, two of which referred directly to the Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan. I won't expand on that because well, that will be reported more fully to the next mm -hmm. meeting. The other item, some of you may have noticed, the garage in Well Street mm, yeah. is an application from Kalangu, which is a coffee chain for an alcohol license. That presumably will be going, it's not the planning committee's province, so that I guess we'll go to the full council for any opportunity. Um, only, only if the member suggested we are not automatically consulted on licensing. Right, okay. Mm. They, um, want, they want to be able to sell alcohol from 8.30 a.m. to 11 p.m seven days a week, so that you can have an alcoholic breakfast. Sounds good. And, <laughs> and the is analog. And then coffee, you coffee, oh, can have Irish coffee. Oh, good. Mm. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's a small chain. I have, um, I have, had, I have, have had, I have must to confess, to. I have had alcoholic breakfasts before, right. but usually at festivals. I was going to say, it's a continuation of the month. Um, <laughs> the other note is, is it so the day to the next meeting is not well planned. It's Monday 14th of February. <laughs> Oh dear, Valentine's night, 7 p.m. So we'll make that a very, very quick one. Because we going to be short of computers in the office at this week, um, actions might be a bit delayed. And with that, only being a fortnight to the next meeting, the chances of reporting back any answers are going to be thin. I'll just warn you now. Yeah, just, just so everyone knows, all the planning portals are being. Um... No, the, the planning portal itself is being. Discontinued over the weekend while they work on it. But in our office, we are changing That's all the computer systems, so we've got no access to could, emails. And so it's a double whammy. Would it be not advisable for us to um, just send a message to them suggesting um, that I know you will afford to this, but you will be saving it all to the cloud, won't you? Um, just in case um, somebody doesn't actually do it. I mean, it, it, it would be ill-advised if we just seek assurance that they are going to save you. In which case, it's okay. It's just that I would hate to be in the position that, um, that all that information disappeared. Where would we be? 
And where would we be? Well, I have asked Aylesbury whether, because we file our responses externally, whether it is actually filtered through their portal the system. Because I've got to have all of this lot sorted by Friday. Mm -hmm. So I might have to handwrite it all. And then I thought, if it's 